Today I'm gonna to review an impact massager. These are called impact or percussion massagers because of the way they work. And this comes with a variety of tips. Uh, this is the one that's the largest and the most, the one I use most common. So you just, you just press them on and that's how they work. But it has a variety of tips, different sizes. This one's as opposed to this one being round. This one's more of a flat tip. And then it's got some that's sort of a blade, depending on what you want to use it for. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And then some smaller tips for smaller areas because not every area is going to be using this, needs this size. So the way this works is again, it's, it's just with thrusting motion. As I turn it on, you can see the percussion action that's taking place. It has various speeds. And from there, I'm on my first speed. The lower level is the speeds. And then the up one is your power, is the battery charge level. So it has, it's fully charged now. And as it goes, as the charge goes down, it'll get down to one. But it charges for, I've used it for maybe four or five days, every twice a day I'll use it for maybe four or five days and it doesn't really run down. So this battery lasts a long time. So that's the first speed. And then you increase to level two, level three, and level four. And just various percussions. So reduce this back to level one. You see the percussion is a lot less and it just gets to be faster at each level. Okay. So that's basically it. This one costs, new I paid about a hundred and, I think I paid about $140 for it at Costco. And the way I bought it is a lady was doing a demo. And you know, I, you know I've used something like this in my office and it was sort of a different type of, of design, but I've used this before, you know, so I talked a little bit about it. I've seen these advertised a lot online. I thought I wanted to just try and see what it was like. But my knee had been bothering me a little bit that day. It was kind of like a little, little popping sensation. Sometimes after working out, I feel like a little strain sometimes on my knee. So I thought, you know, let me just try this out. And I tried it out for maybe two minutes on there. And as I was walking away, I felt like the knee was, I mean, no pain, no strain. It was, there was no tension. It felt great. You know, I mean, it was enough to where I was like, went back and I bought this during thing. You know, thinking, I've got to, I've got to try this out. I mean, never try, tried this before, and I wanted to try it, you know? So again, now, new, it was 140, but I found that you can buy them online for as low as 40 to $60. I mean, new, you can buy them for $60, and I saw them online for $40 for people who are, you know, just getting rid of them. And they're all basically the same. This one is called Impact Theory, and I forget which company this is by, that may be the name of the company. It's, it's by True Medic, True Medic. And again, I don't know the difference between different types and what makes one better than the other, but they probably work off the basic principle. They're just percussion, you know? That's all they tend to do. It's not like anyone rotates or does anything any better or less. The tips may be a little bit different, but the basic design of how it works is the same. Now I'm gonna show you how I use it for my knee and for smaller joints like the shoulder, you know, you use, as opposed to the larger tip, you use a smaller tip because the shoulder is, as, as to get into certain areas, you're gonna need a smaller tip to get in there because you got a lot of different muscles and a lot of different joints that you're gonna be using there. So use a smaller tip for something like that. And for other areas that you wanna use a flat tip, depending on what part you want. If you want, if I wanna use a, something like for my bicep, I would use a, a flat tip for that area because I'm just doing the soft tissue, which is the bicep area. But if I want to get into like a, a groove, what's called a socket or a fossa, I will use a tip that I can get inside there and really work. Because when I'm working the shoulder, you want to work it from underneath here. And now you're under what's called an armpit. And with an armpit, you want to kind of have something a little bit round because it fits a little bit better inside there. Or if you're working on the back of the knee, you want to have something a little bit more round. Or if you're working within the hip joint itself, within the hip socket. So depending on how you use it, you just kind of had to play with the different types of, of attachments that are there. So enough talking about that. Let me show you how I use it for my knees here. Now, one of the things that I did not do and I don't do is I don't put any lotion or anything on my knees because it tends to, to ruin the tip. The tip has kind of a little bit of friction to it. So when I use it, I can feel the friction against my leg, against my regular skin. And if I oil my skin, uh, 
it would probably, eventually this would come very smooth and then I lose that little feeling that I'm supposed to get. And I think there's a natural feeling that this is, this is supposed to have with your skin itself. So I would not use oil on that. This also explains when you see my ashy legs, why my legs would be ashy, but that's another whole story. Okay, let's look at the legs now. Let me move you around for a moment. Okay, here we go. Now with anatomy, just explain a little bit about the anatomy of the knee. You have the tendon, which is right here that attaches to the patella, the, the kneecap. So there's a little tendon that attaches right here, and it attaches to a muscle that kind of fans out a little bit and goes up this direction. So the muscle, I'll make a little mark on my skin. So there you go. This is the outline of the muscle pretty much right here. And then you have muscle over here. You can even see the muscle there. Muscles over here and then the muscle on the inside that you're using. So this is the one that I want to kind of stay around. And then these little points here, you can see the little depression right there. You see how that dips in right there? That's called a fossa. And there's a little fossa over here, like a fossa. So I wanna make sure I get into those fossils because it allows me to get between the tendons and muscle. It allows me to get more vibration into the knee. And then of course, the back of the knee is a big depression or fossa. So I can be in there and there's a small one right here. And you use your finger, you can find out what those little fossils are because you're gonna be using your tool to get right inside there and doing your vibration in those places. You wanna to try to avoid the bony prominences. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna massage directly over a bony area. You're gonna stay within sort of the tendon and then a little bit over the tendon and mostly within the fossa because you're gonna get a lot of vibration when you're in the fossa doing your vibration. All right, so let's start this. I'm gonna to go to my number three. So I'm gonna the number three level here and rather than going all the way. And I'm gonna start within this fossa right here. You can see that fossa starting right in there. Let me take this off here. There you go. Sometimes the knee will be straight, and sometimes I'll have the, the foot flat on the floor. This is the best place for that. I feel this vibration really strongly in the knee itself now. As I come across toward the midline, and I'll hold each place for about a minute. The angle that you use also is important. So if I angle down a little bit, I can feel the effect going a little bit differently as opposed to going direct straight overhead or going here or from the side. You'll feel the impact because of the vibration or the force moves in the direction that this is angled. So it's now it's going directly into that fossa. Now moving right over the tendon, I'm not putting much pressure at all. I'm not pushing down, I'm basically using the weight of my hand and just the weight of the, of the uh, instrument. And I have a minute there, and I'm moving very slightly. If, it's, if, if anything, I'm moving a little small circle. So I'm not staying in one particular spot. I'm kind of letting a little bit of movement take place at these positions. And I'm moving to the inside. Remember there's a fossa right there on the inside. I'm gonna shorten my time at each spot so I don't make the video too long. And I move right in here. That's another spot. And I feel that vibration all within the knee itself. So I'm going all the way around the knee. And I'm not directly behind the knee, I'm kind of toward the side at this point. Pointing the gun directly at the kneecap. Oh, that's good, it feels good. And I'm going directly behind. Again, my line of drive is toward the kneecap. And I'll come back to the side again. So 
So I basically did kind of a circle right around the top of the kneecap, going around and hitting different places there. You can use it in front, but I'll use a smaller tip. If you have like tendonitis or something in here, I'll use a smaller tip. And it, you see what happens when you get on Bony Promises, how it bounces? It, it, that's not effective. So that's why I either use a smaller tip or move over to a side. If I move to the side of the kneecap, this tip is too big. And that's another reason why you, 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 when your tip is too big, you can't really get in there. Let me just change that and show you the difference. There you go. Now I can get in that area a lot better because I can get, it's small, so I can get this tip right into the little depression there. If I get off of it, you see it bounces. So I gotta stay right on that little area. There's a little area in there where you can, where it's a little depression in there. Now you'll find around the other side, right here where I press my finger, that's where the depression is and I can just hold it right there. And if I move a little bit to one side, you'll notice it'll start bouncing around if I get too far to the side. So I'm gonna stay right in there. Good, all right. Now I'm gonna go through the other part of the knee. I'm gonna finish with my other tip. So you go right up the leg. This is a long area called the tensor fascia lateral. There's a long tendon that goes along here. And when you're talking about the knee, this is really a very important part of what you're gonna use your therapy, right along here. And now I'm putting a little bit, little bit of pressure in. I'm not pushing it in hard, but I'm putting a little pressure there. You're gonna go all the way up to the hip bone. And even though you have it on the hip bone, you'll feel it vibrating along the tendon, all the way along there. And you'll just continue up and down again for one minute. And you'll go slow as you're moving up. And then you go to the muscle here on the outside, and And then the muscle right here on the inside, the medialis. Then lastly, you'll take it from the inside of the knee all the way up toward the hip. There's a muscle that goes along there that attaches to the knee to the knee joint. You take it all the way up. Okay. I just hold it for one or one or two seconds and it goes off. All right. Now let's chat for a moment. Okay. I like this massager. I think it works really great. It's one that you can use, as I say, on shoulders, elbows, hips, knees, and just in, your, in the back especially. There's a tip that you can use for the back, which is this one, and this was where the center of the spine would be. So these are mostly for the muscles on both sides of the spine. So you'll kind of like, you know, take it, if this is my spine, I'll keep it toward the, toward the middle here. So I can work on the paraspinals or the muscles on both sides of the spine and really give you a lot of relief there. Fun thing to play with. I'd be interested to see what you think of those. And I would recommend, you know, you try it out. If you have fibromyalgia, if you have any other kind of joint pain, even recovery. Like, like an injury, if you have a shoulder injury, a shoulder surgery, and you're trying to recover from, from something like that, you can use this. This is very gentle and it doesn't really cause more harm, but it'll be more relaxing. I think you really enjoy that a lot. Uh, if you have, like me, when I work out, you give you faster recovery. If I work out, I, sometimes my knees are sore, like I worked out today, use my knees are sore the, you know, the rest of the day. I, feel, I can feel them real stiff, but I don't feel it, feel it at all after I use this. 
So it's a great for recovery. It increases the blood flow to the area. That's why it promotes healing. Whenever that vibration is occurring, it's bringing a lot of blood to the area, and that's why it's, it's therapeutic. It brings blood flow. It increases the heat because vibration causes heat to happen. And you know heat is one of those uh, natural uh, forces that tend to create and promote healing. So it's heat, vibration, it's massage, which means it's relaxing. So it has a lot of great, and it breaks up the scar tissue. So if you have any kind of scar tissue, that vibration tends to break up that scar tissue. So it's, a, it's found on very good principles as far as therapy, and I recommend it. I think you will like it. Um, if you have one already, try it out, but send me your comments and let me know what you think. All right, guys, that's my tip. That's my review on the massager, which causes a therapeutic, an impact, or, or a percussion massager. All right, guys, makes the day awesome. See you next time.